Hello guys, this is Dr. Karaki. In this video, we're gonna talk about protein sequencing steps. Sanger's strategy for protein sequencing consists of four steps. First, we have to prepare the protein for sequencing by determining the number of polypeptide chains and to reduce the disulfide bridges. Then, we have to separate and purify these chains. The second step consists of cleaving each chain into small fragments made of less than 50 amino acids to be able to sequence them. We fragment these chains using different enzymes, not just one enzyme. So we must use different enzymes to fragment these chains in such a way the fragments obtained by the different enzymes overlap. The third step consists of sequencing these fragments using admin degradation that label the N-terminal amino acid, so we can know by which amino acid these fragments start. The, the next step is to organize the fragments obtained by the fragmentation step by comparing the overlaps to find the complete sequence of amino acid in the polypeptide chain. And we have to find also the position of the disulfide bridges. Let's start by determining the number of polypeptide chains. To do so, we must identify the N-terminal and C-terminal residues. In order to identify the N-terminal residue, we can either choose a chemical or an enzymatical method. From the chemical method, we can choose between the Sanger's method using the Sanger's reagent, the dinitrofluorobenzene, or the Denzel chloride, or the Edmund, Edmund's method using the Edmund reagent, the PITC, the phenyl isothiocyanate. These reagents react with the N-terminal residue and yield a chromophore or a fluorescent product indicating the N-terminal residue. Or we can use an enzymatical way uh, by choosing the an aminopeptidase. Aminopeptidase are exopeptidase that cleave the N-terminal amino acid residue from a polypeptide chain and we have different types of aminopeptidase with different specificities. Now to identify the C-terminal residue we can either use a carboxypeptidase which is an enzymatical technique or a chemical technique. So the carboxypeptidase will cleave the last peptide bond releasing the last or the C-terminal amino acid. We have different type of carboxypeptidase with different specificities. Carboxypeptidase A will cleave the last, uh, the last peptide bond releasing the last amino acid if it is an arginine, lysine, or proline, provided that the amino acid preceding it is not proline. Carboxypeptidase B will cleave the last peptide bond if the last amino acid is arginine or lysine, provided that the amino acid preceding it is not proline. Carboxypeptidase C uh, cleave all free C-terminal residues at optimum pH 3.5, while carboxypeptidase Y will cleave all free C-terminal residues, but slowly if the last amino acid is glycine. We can also use uh, a chemical technique to identify the C-terminal residue called hydrazinolysis by using a hydrazine. Hydrazine is NH2, NH2. This technique is used in the presence of an acidic catalyst. The acidic condition will cleave all, uh, will cleave the peptide into individual amino acid. The hydrazine will react with these individual amino acid except the last amino acid. So in this way, we obtain the free amino acid, uh, the C-terminal free amino acid. So after determining the N and C terminal residues, it's important to reduce the SS bonds. These bonds could exist between two cysteine within the same chain and they are called intrachain bonds or between two cysteine existing in two chains and they are called interchain. It's important to reduce the disulfide bonds whether the protein is made of one or more subunits. 
If the protein is made of more than one subunit, so it has a quaternary structure, reducing the SS bond will separate the subunits into individual polypeptide chains. And if it's made of just one subunit, so it has a tertiary structure, reducing SS bonds will expose the amino acid more to the action of endopeptidase used to fragment these polypeptide chains. We're going to talk about them later on. So in order to reduce the SS bonds, first of all, we have to denaturate the protein to expose it to heat in order to expose the sulfhydryl groups, the SH groups. Then we can use a reducing agent, the beta mercaptoethanol or the dithiothyretol, to break the SS bonds. These SS bonds exist between, uh, between two cysteine molecules forming a cystin. So the two, two mercaptoethanol are used to reduce the cystin. So the mercaptoethanol is going to donate a hydrogen to the cystin molecule to reduce it and uh, we're going to obtain two cysteine molecules and the uh, mercaptoethanol will be uh, joined by SS bonds. Now we need, after the, uh, we obtain the two cysteine molecules, we need to protect these SH group to prevent them from rejoining again. To do so, we need to use the iodoacetate. So the iodoacetate is used to prevent the reformation of SS bonds between two cysteine molecules. In this way, we block the uh, sulfhydryl group by forming the S carboxy methyl cysteine and hydroiodic acid. The, the second step consists of the fragmentation of the polypeptide chain into smaller fragments of less than 50 amino acids, then to separate and purify these fragments. In order to fragment the polypeptide chains, we can either use a chemical technique like the cyanogen bromide or an enzymatical technique like using the endopeptidase. The endopeptidase will cleave the pept a peptide bond. Uh, we have different types of endopeptidase uh, and each one has its own specificity. For example, trypsin will cleave the peptide bond at the carboxyl end of positively charged amino acid like arginine and lysine, provided that the next amino acid is not proline. So trypsin will cleave after arginine and lysine, uh, such as the next amino acid is not proline. Chymotrypsin is going to cleave at the carboxyl end, which means after aromatic amino acid like phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, provided that the next amino acid is not proline. Elastase will cleave at the carboxyl end of small and neutral amino acids like alanine, glycine, valine, and serine, provided that the next amino acid is not proline. Pepsin is different than the other endopeptidase. It cleaves at the N terminal end, at the amino end, and not at the carboxyl end. So it cleaves before uh, leucine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, provided that the, uh, the amino acid uh, after it uh, is not proline. So the pepsin will cleave before leucine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, provided that the amino acid preceding it is not proline. The cyanogen bromide is the chemical that we can use also to fragment a polypeptide chain. It, uh, it cleaves specifically the peptide bond at the carboxyl end of methionine. So it cleaves just after methionine. The third step is the sequencing of the fragments using, using the admin degradation and it's used to determine the amino acid sequence of each peptide. The fourth step is to organize these fragments by overlapping them. So we need to look for a common amino acid to, uh, to overlap the chains like this one to finally get the whole sequence in order. Then we need to elucidate the position of the sulfide, disulfide bonds. 
in order to do that, we have to repeat all the previous steps using the same enzymes, but without using an SS reducing agent. In this way, we keep the disulfide bridge intact and we separate the fragments obtained and we compare we can then compare the fragment obtained with uh, the SS bond and without the SS bond to determine the position of these disulfide bridges. In the next video, we're gonna solve this exercise so you can practice more how to solve such protein sequencing uh, exercise. So click on the link above to go directly to the video. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, please like and subscribe.